So, what's important here is that the formula. When you play a major scale, you're realizing that you're playing a half step between 3, 4, and 7, and 8. Now, I could go up any string and start on A and use that formula of whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Using that formula, major scale has to have a half step between 3 and 4, and seven and one or seven and eight. You gotta know that. You gotta be able to show it. I asked my students to show me, okay? So, once again, getting back to the major scale, I wanna talk about the finger placement. When I start off, you can see my fingers in that one, two, three, four. Um, I'm right in position, okay? My finger placement is gonna be tips of fingers, fingers hugging the frets. And as I start on second finger, and I play the fourth finger, my first finger is all ready for the next string. It's already set up to go down. And then second finger is all ready. It's already there. Just add the second finger. My fourth finger, where is it? It's ready to play the next degree of the scale. Where's my first finger? It's ready. I'm prepared ahead of time because my fingers are set up. The seven, and then I'm at the root again. Now I'm going to the second octave. I'm on the root. My first finger's ready for the two. My third finger's already there. My fourth finger's all ready to fall down. And then my next note is going to be on the B string. I need my perfect fifth, and that's gonna be second finger. And my finger's already set up. My fourth finger's ready for the six. And the seven, my first finger's already there and then the root. So my fingers are prepared. They're ready. All they, all they need to do is fall. So I'm going to come backwards. I'm going to go uh, root seven. Where's my fourth finger? It's ready to fall here. Second finger's ready. I'm already prepared for fourth finger, third finger, first finger, fourth finger, third finger, first finger, fourth finger, second finger, my first finger's ready, my fourth finger's ready ahead of time, and then ready for a second finger. Now, another thing that's going on is my right hand. I'm doing down, up, 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 up. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. I can't say it there. So I'm strictly doing down, up picking. You want to start that slow. And sometimes it's good to say, to say the up, down. So you're going to start with down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Down, up, 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 down, up. It's good to say so that your pick, you internalize it, and it's happening with your fingers, and you're strictly doing down, up picking. Just as you should say the intervals, like I was counting before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, seven, six. Four, three, two, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Where are the ones? The roots. So, learning to play your scales well in an orthodox manner with the good habits of hugging the frets, tips of fingers, and notice my wrist. Did you notice? I started here and I ended here. And then I'm going to start here, coming back. So there's a motion here. My wrist comes up and down. It moves. My fingers are in position. So the great thing about learning your major scale is that when you know the intervals, when you know we have roots, we have what we call major seconds, the second degree of the scale. 
what we call major thirds. And then we have perfect fourths. And then we have the perfect fifths. The major six. And then the major seven. And then we're back to roots. Sevens, sixes, fives, fours, threes, twos, and then we're back to ones. When we learn those intervals, then we're able to look at chords and look at the bar chord A. And when I play that bar chord, I can see I've got a root on my sixth string. That's my A note, and then my E note is my third finger, and that's a perfect fifth. One, two, three, four, five. And then my fourth finger is playing another root. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, root, one. Then my second finger in this bar chord is playing one, two, three, playing a major third. And then my bar, where I'm barring, I'm barring the fifth string and first string here, so I've got a one, two, three, four, five, I've got a perfect fifth, and then another root on the top. So I just analyzed this chord. I have a root, perfect fifth, another root. I have a major third, a perfect fifth, and a root. And if I really learn about intervals, I could take one of my fingers and take it off, and then I have a, uh, let's say I take the second finger off. That gives me a minor chord. So now my second finger is off, and it went from a major third to a minor third, which that would be the third degree of the minor scale. You'll get to that when I do a minor, uh, when I do a minor lesson for you on the scale, okay? It's coming up. So anyways, minor third, that's gonna be a minor chord. I could add a fourth, and this is what we call suspension. And then to a major chord. Now, if I have the fourth finger off, I also have what's called the dominant seven from the dominant seven scale. You're gonna learn that later. So I have a seven, I could add another seven. I could add a six with my baby finger, and this becomes uh, what we would call an A seven six, but no, we usually call it an A 13. Because that six, one, two, three, four, five, six, becomes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And then, on the top, sometimes we call that two, that major second, A to B, we call that a nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's an A seven nine. Here's an A thirteen nine. A seven, added seven. So starting to use that scale, when you really know that A major scale, starts to allow us to analyze the chords in this area, in this geometric part of the guitar fretboard. So we're able to see the intervals, and then we're able to add, uh, knowing what we're adding to a chord or taking away from a chord. We're understanding. And it goes farther than that. We can break that chord into single notes. The arpeggio for that chord would be two, one, four, four, three, two, two. So there's my form two arpeggio. I'm playing two, one, four, and I'm barring four because I'm playing a fifth and a root. Then I'm bringing my third finger in, and then I'm barring rolling my second finger the kind of bar for the top and coming back and then barring my fourth one two two one four four three two 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 three four four so that's the chord and the scale broken into a major arpeggio we're going to talk a lot more about arpeggios and uh, some other videos coming up. But anyways, I've talked a lot about this A major scale so far. It's really, really important. That's why I wanted to take the time to talk about how to practice it by counting it, counting the octaves, and then learning the intervals 
is going to be important. But also knowing your note names, realizing you're playing an A, a B, a C sharp, a D, a E, an F sharp, a G sharp, an A, a B, a C sharp, a D, an E, an F sharp, a G sharp, and an A. The key of A, well, let's see. What, what, we have three sharps. So uh, it's important to start seeing your note names as well as being able to count to know the intervals.